Helen Mirren Biography Overview Born July 26, 1945, Hammersmith, London, England, UK Birth name Helen Lydia Myronoff Nickname Popper Height 5 foot 4 1.63 m Dame Helen Mirren was born in Queen Charlotte's Hospital in West London. Her mother, Kathleen Alexandrina Eva Matilda, Rogers, was from a working-class English family, and her father, Vasily Petrovich Mironov, was a Russian-born civil servant, from Kurianovo, whose own father was a diplomat. Mirren attended Street Bernard's High School for Girls, where she would act in school productions. After high school, she began her acting career in theater, working in many productions, including in the West End and Broadway. IMDb Mini Biography by Aidan Mack Family Spouse, Taylor Hackford, December 31, 1997, Present Children Rio Hackford Alex Hackford Parents Kathleen Alexandrina Eva Matilda Myronoff, Rogers Vasily Petrovich Myronov. Relatives. Peter Basil Myronov, sibling. Catherine Myronov, sibling. Tanya Mallet, cousin. Trivia. Her great 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 grandfather was Field Marshal Kamensky, one of the Russian heroes of the Napoleonic Wars. Lived with Liam Neeson for four years after meeting on the set of Excalibur, 1981. Subsequently lived for further four years with British photographer and fashion designer James Wedge. Mirren first met Wedge when she posed for his cover photo for the July 11, 1971 edition of the Observer magazine titled, Shakespearean star Helen Mirren shows how to dress with drama. Some of his erotica portraits of her appeared in her 2008 autobiography in the frame, My Life in Words and Pictures. John Borman said he cast her opposite Nicol Williamson in Excalibur, 1981, against both of their protests, because he felt their dislike of each other made them perfect as rivals Morgana and Merlin. Has a tattoo of a star on her left hand, acquired at a Native American reservation in Minnesota. She was awarded the Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire in the 2003 Queen's Birthday Honors List for her services to drama. Her paternal grandparents were Russian. Her grandfather, Pyotr Vasilyevich Myronov, was a czarist aristocrat who was in London negotiating an arms deal during World War I when the 1917 Russian Revolution stranded him there. His wife and son, Helen's father, joined him in London. On her mother's side, she is of English descent. Used to work in Southend-on-Sea, Essex at an amusement park, the Corzal, as a blagger to attract customers onto rides became the third person, after Sigourney Weaver and Joan Plowright, to win two Golden Globes for acting in the same year. The characters she played were both Queens of England, Queen Elizabeth I and Queen Elizabeth II. Despite her Russian birth name and ancestry, she does not speak Russian, but is fluent in French. She was initially hesitant to sign on to Red, 2010, due to film's graphic violence but changed her mind upon learning of Bruce Willis's involvement. Met husband-to-be Taylor Hackford when he directed her in White Nights, 1985. When the couple married in the Scottish Highlands, Hackford was dressed in a traditional Scottish tartan kilt. At the premiere of The Queen, 2006, at the Venice Film Festival, her performance received a five-minute standing ovation. She is the only actress to play both Queen Elizabeth I, in Elizabeth I, 2005, and Queen Elizabeth II, The Queen, 2006. She holds the record for second-largest Best Actress Award sweep, 40 wins, for her performance as Queen Elizabeth II in The Queen, 2006, following Kate Blanchett, 41 wins, for her performance as Jasmine French in Blue Jasmine, 2013. According to an article in People Weekly, November 3, 1980, her tattoo is an American Indian symbol meaning equal but opposite. Placed her hand and footprint in cement in front of Grauman Chinese Theater on March 28, 2011. She has a curious fascination with facial scars, particularly on men, finding them quite sexy and mysterious, perhaps indicative of an intriguing chapter in a man's life.
She actually sported a facial scar for her role in the debt, 2010. She allegedly refused the CBE, Commander of Order of the British Empire, in 1996. She is quoted as being a naturist, telling the Radio Times, I'm a naturist at heart. I love being on beaches where everyone is naked, ugly people, beautiful people, old people, whatever. It's so unisexual and so liberating. In 2004, she was named Naturist of the Year by British Naturism. She said, many thanks to British Naturism for this great honor. I do believe in naturism and am my happiest on a nude beach with people of all ages and races. Is one of 13 actresses to have won the Academy Award, BAFTA Award, Critics' Choice Award, Golden Globe Award, and SAG Award. The others in chronological order are Julia Roberts for Aaron Brockovich, 2000, Renee Zellweger for Cold Mountain, 2003, Reese Witherspoon for Walk the Line, 2005, Jennifer Hudson for Dreamgirls, 2006, Kate Winslet for The Reader, 2008, and Monique for Precious, 2009, Natalie Portman for Black Swan, 2010, Octavia Spencer for The Help, 2011, and Hathaway for Les Miserables, 2012, Kate Blanchett for Blue Jasmine, 2013, Patricia Arquette for Boyhood, 2014, and Julianne Moore for Still Alice. 2014, she and her husband Taylor Hackford are both Oscar winners. Won 29 major awards for her portrayal of Queen Elizabeth II and the Queen, 2006, including all the awards that are considered the biggest, except Cannes. She was also nominated for three more awards for the same film. Quotes About herself, being famous for being cool about not being gorgeous. The trick in life is learning how to deal with it. About the Academy Awards, it's the cream de la cream of bulls asterisk asterisk t actors are rogues and vagabonds. Or they ought to be. I can't stand it when they behave like solicitors from Penge. I'm a would-be rebel. The good girl who'd like to be a bad one. All you have to do is to look like crap on film and everyone thinks you're a brilliant actress. Actually, all you've done is look like crap. Flesh cells. People don't want to see pictures of churches. They want to see naked bodies. On becoming Dame Helen Mirren in 2003, in England, it's a big deal. I do feel it's a great honor. But I had to think about it quite seriously for a couple of weeks. It does sort of squash you into the establishment thing. In the end, my baser feelings got the better of me. I succumbed to pride. In 2006, being me right now is sort of amazing. Part of her BAFTA acceptance speech, BAFTA Film Awards, 2007, this is great. What an honor, especially to be nominated, just to be nominated amongst those incredible powerhouse performances this year from women. I applaud them. I think they were absolutely fantastic. Write more roles for us like that please. On Ian Richardson, BAFTA Film Awards, 2007, many years ago, when I started off as an actress, I had the immense good fortune to work with an actor that was so generous at sharing his craft, he became a mentor to me, he helped me believe in myself. Ian Richardson, I'm not too sure I would be here today if it wasn't for you. On her role in National Treasure, Book of Secrets, 2007, I get half-drowned, jump across an abyss, and fly. I loved every minute of it. Getting attached to wires and flying was the most glorious feeling. It's a lot easier than acting. On not having children, no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I am so happy that I didn't have children. Well, you know. Because I've had freedom. On the participation of celebrities in social movements, I've been involved with Oxfam on the proliferation of the illegal sale of small arms throughout the world, which is causing such, such devastation. The only way you can sometimes garner attention is by sending someone like me as a front person. There's nothing sexy about doing a nude scene. It's rather uncomfortable. I like dressing up rather than dressing down. On filming Love Ranch, 2010, with husband Taylor Hackford, funnily enough, the older prostitutes are the most popular, because the guys think they're user-friendly. They're comfortable with them, so they don't feel intimidated. And guys who go to brothels are not the most successful guys in the world sexually, so that's what they need. 
it's all about not being intimidated. About working with husband Taylor Hackford, working with him, I have to say, wasn't easy. My husband in work mode is not the easiest of people, although a lot of people adore working with him. But because I have the emotional connection with him, I would get upset if he was shouting, not at me, but at someone else, demanding something. I would be seeing it from their point of view. I would find myself rushing around trying to mop up after him. But I love the fact that he got the film together and he created a wonderful role for me. But husbands and wives don't need to work together. We are professional people in our own worlds. There's nothing I love more than going to my husband's set and being his wife. But this, it mixes the roles up. It either gets too cozy, which is not a good thing, because it's not very creative. Or it gets the opposite. He didn't make me cry, but he made me very cross. I was never going to be anyone's mom or grandmother. But I can dig that beautiful earth mother thing, feeding the masses. I'm thinking of Nigella Lawson. Does she have children? She does. Do you know what I mean? She's sort of gorgeously fertile. That's sexy. I actually won my first Golden Globe for something called Losing Chase, 1996. Kyra Sedgwick and me fell in love with each other, and it was a lovely piece about women loving women. In my heart of hearts, I love women more than I love men. I mean sexuality aside, I'm heterosexual. I guess I'm heterosexual. I loved my friend I had at college, because there was a sense of camaraderie and physical closeness that doesn't have to be sexual. On asking to be interviewed by male rather than female journalists, I prefer male journalists because there's a streak of female journalism, the bitches who are mean-spirited and nasty because you are another woman and want to make you feel crap. It's very upsetting. Bay. 